Hi there, Tracy here with another scrapbooking process video. And when I first sat down to scrapbook, I was planning to use this hip kit. This is the hip kit. I think it might be from February or perhaps March. It is the last hip kit that I received. Um, I have taken a bit of a break from uh, kits and going and plan to use my stash for a little while here as I sort out my new scrapbooking schedule <laughs> as I get used to a uh, change in work and uh, lifestyle and that sort of thing. So here I have these two photos of these gourmet donuts. We don't typically, actually, I didn't even know that we had a gourmet, gourmet donut shop in our city. And so we don't eat a whole lot of donuts, but Scott was out and he went to this place called Vandal Donuts and they have these really cool, um, very, very rich, fancy donuts. And so um, we... He bought four of them and this is kind of a thing that he does. He often, if he's going to a bakery or any kind of place where you can get little sweets, he usually buys four completely different ones and then he goes home and he cuts them all up into four pieces and we each have a little bit of everything. And that's something that's kind of quirky and unique to Scott. He might not be the only one in the world who does it, but um, he he always does that. And it's not something that I would normally think I would usually kind of try to pick one for each person and you get what you get. But this is a nice way for everybody to try something. So uh, I changed my mind on the hip kit. As you can see, I pulled out my folders that have Amy Tangerine. That first folder that I put away was the original Amy Tangerine uh, collection, which has a really different color scheme to it. And this is a bunch of other Amy Tangerine. So this first set of papers are from On a Whim and then as we get closer to the bottom of this pile of papers we go to the Yes Please collection. And most of the papers I'm going to be scrapbooking with today are from the Yes Please collection. I'm thinking I might use these frames and cut them out and use them as an embellishment. And I was originally thinking about using that splattered looking watercolory green background paper, but now I'm thinking I really like how this paper, this this pink one with the chevrons, has this real quartered look to it. And where the story I'm going to tell is about about cutting things into quarters, I thought that that background paper would work a little bit better with the story I'm trying to tell. So there's the green paper that I was going to use as my background, but I think I'm going to use that pink paper instead. I just really like how it helps me to tell the story in a really subtle way. Um, most people when they look at the page might not think, oh, the page is in quarters, but I like that. <laughs> I like adding a little subtle detail that kind of supports the story or whatever. I'm just showing you how I make my folders that store my paper. They're just basically made out of a Ziploc bag and that holds them together. There are two sides of that bag that are together, um, meaning not slit. And so it holds all my scraps and pieces of paper together in my shelf. Now, I was thinking that there is some some type of Dear Lizzie collection that has a donut in like icon in it as well. So I'm looking through my Dear Lizzie papers, just looking for donuts. And as I'm doing this, I'm thinking I really don't need a donut on this page because there's donuts in the photos and I'm not huge into themes and, and kind of like using thematic embellishments on my pages. But I do feel like a donut is a bit of a random icon most of the time. And so if I have donuts in my stash, I might as well use them on this on this page about donuts. So I'm just going to take a, a few minutes to go through my stash and try to find any donuts that I might have. It turns out that I, either I don't have many or I couldn't find them very easily. So this is my drawer of flat stickers and I'm just going through and I'm picking out those uh, freckled fawn um, washi stickers that I just pulled out first. Those, I really like the colors on those and I think they're going to work well with the Amy Tangerine papers. This is the Amy Tangerine original sticker set and as you can see there's too many browns and oranges in that one for what I'm looking for. Here's another Amy Tangerine set of stickers. These ones are clear shiny stickers and so I pulled those out too. And I'm basically looking for donuts, but I'm also looking for anything that I think I might be able to use on this page. And I'm kind of just familiarizing myself with my stash. It's been a while since I've used my stash and not used a kit. So I'm just flipping through and taking a look at what I have. 
These are my dimensional stickers, so anything puffy sticker, um, basically anything that is sticky and also has some dimension is on here. I was pretty sure there was a donut in that set of puffy stickers, so I pulled that out and I did find a donut in it. And there's also a uh, Dear Lizzie sticker, puffy sticker set there that has a donut on it. I love these wood veneer stickers. They have a summer theme, but I think I can use them anyways. And I'm basically pulling out anything with that really bright, colorful uh, color palette. And leaning towards pinks as opposed to reds and oranges. Now these are words and I'm just looking through and thinking about what words I might want to add to this. I'm not looking for giant words at this point, just little words. And nothing really stood out for me, so I'll just leave those. I might pull into them if I need to. But I have a little stack of embellishments. I put them over to the right and now I'm going to... Um, I guess start start layering and putting my page together. I started by taking off the manufacturer's strip. Of course, this is the Yes Please collection from Amy Tangerine. I will also use my Creative Memories trimmer to trim down my photos. This is my favorite trimmer for small cuts, either Project Life type things or making little cards or trimming down my photos. And I like my Stampin' Up! printer for my other trimming needs. Uh, so I'm thinking I want to add some contrast to this. So I'm going to add some black cardstock matting to my photos. And my photos are printed at three by three. I printed them up with my uh, Epson Picture Mate charm, which is my small format printer. It prints four by six photos. And I'm just talking about how you get used to your, your trimmer and you start to know like landmarks on your trimmer of where you need to line things up so that you get the proper matting. And that just comes from experience. And so I'm talking here also about the colors that are in the photo. I want to pick up on that bright green that's in the Oscar donut. And also there's green on the plate in the background of the other photo as well. I really liked that yellow and white strip. So I, I um, cut that off just in case I wanted to use it. And I'm going, I really want to emphasize the fact that this paper is in quarters. Uh, and so because it's not really obvious, it kind of looks like chevrons and it definitely has that kind of symmetrical look to it. Um, I'm just showing you my new, my new sewing machine. This replaces my hot pink one. This is gray and hot pink. It's also a new home uh, sewing machine. Did I call it a printer? <laughs> um, it's a sewing machine obviously um, and I'm just threading it with black and it's New Home by Genome and uh, my p hot pink one there was something wrong with the with the plug for it and so the company replaced it for me when I let them know that it did, it basically didn't work from the moment I opened it. So, I mean, it, I could get it to work if I jiggled around with it enough, but it didn't work the way it was supposed to so they replaced it for me, no questions asked so that was nice um, and now because this is the first time I'm ever using this, oh, I found something and didn't know what it was. So I was asking my Patreons if they knew what it was. It was on my floor. It looks like a lid to some type of glue. So um, if you know what that is, leave me a comment so that I can put it back on what, whatever it belongs to. This is just a sample of the, uh, of, of the, th of the different types of stitches from this machine. I made that with the, with the hot pink one. And uh, so, yes, yeah, so I want to emphasize the fact that this is four quadrants. And so I'm going to sew down the center of it. I'm, I'm stitching on the setting that is C, which is my favorite scrapbooking setting. It's kind of a nice, it gives you a nice size stitch for a scrapbook page. And I am going to stitch all the way around the outside edges of this too. And I accidentally started off stitching too far in, like I wanted this stitching to be closer to the outside edge of this paper, but that's gonna end up being to my favor. I'm gonna cut out some of this because it was pretty repetitive and I do like to show my whole process, but I double stitched around the outside and the inside edges of that. 
And for now, I didn't do my additional, my alternative uh, angle, but I will get back to doing that eventually. So what I decided to do, and the reason that it was a good thing that I accidentally made the stitching too far in on the page, is that I decided to mat this whole page on black. And I just felt like that would give the page a little bit more structure, and also a little bit introducing that black outside edge just gives it a little bit more contrast. And I really like the black the um like the black matting on a page and it'll pick up on the black that will be elsewhere on this page i plan for the title to be black and so i'm just using my scissors here i showed you my tim holtz distressing tool that you can also use i'm just demonstrating that you can get almost the same look with that tool but i felt like I was getting a little bit more control with my scissors than I would have gotten with that tool and I didn't want it to look so much frayed as I wanted it to look kind of just beat up and randomly frayed in some places and cut and just bent in other places. My main goal here is that I'm breaking down the fibers on the edges of the paper so that it will have a messy look to it. I'm going to pull it up with my fingertips and then use my ATG to uh, to glue this down and I'm putting my adhesive really on the very very edges because I want it to look like this paper is sewn to the other paper so I don't want it peeling back where the stitching is I want the stitching to be really stuck down to that black cardstock so it doesn't look like a faux effect which is basically what it is like those two papers are not stitched together but I want it to look like they are so this yellow paper I thought really picked up nicely on some of the yellow M&Ms on, on one of the donuts. And so I really love yellow. It's one of my favorite colors, but it's a little bit too intense. So I thought I would tone it down by layering this neutral gray grid paper. Also, these are all from Tammy, Amy Tangerine, yes, please. And then there's this other slightly darker gray with the polka dot that I really liked too. And I thought I might layer this in somehow. Uh, and I thought maybe vertically. This is what I often do is I put a couple of horizontal strips and then I usually balance it off with a vertical strip of some sort or a vertical chunk. So I'm just going to glue these pieces to one another and then I will position. Now see this corner I'm pointing to? I consider that an orphan corner. What it means is that the corner, it's just a t term I made up, um, but it, it just means um, a corner that's all by itself and looks kind of weird and lonely and not quite right. And so I always try to cover up those orphan corners, but as you'll see as I go on designing this, it's gonna pop its way back out again as I <laughs> change the way things are layered. And what you'll see when that happens is that it really doesn't matter. It might be something that is just more important in my head than it actually is on paper. But anyhow, if you've followed me for a while, you've probably heard me talking about orphan corners. And this is just evidence that you don't have to follow these kinds of rules. Even the self-imposed rules that you make up yourself, you really don't have to follow them. They're not as important as we probably think they are when we're doing this. So <laughs> it just occurred to me that another hit of black might be nice besides the matting on the photos. So I decided to mat that vertical chunk of paper, the gray vertical chunk. And I like how that looks. I made it I made it be matted behind the layers instead of in front of it so that it does, I didn't want to interrupt that section of where uh, underneath of the uh, first photo on the on the left I didn't want a piece of black running up right there because I thought I would put my journaling there and I don't want to break it up whatever I put there I don't want to break it up so I made that black paper run behind now I'm just looking through my uh, word sticker drawer these are all words of various sizes and at this point I decided to look through the large words and see if I could come up with a, a title that used one of these these large words in foam because this has a real um, kind of almost graffiti look to it because of the script font and uh, where the name of this donut shop is called Vandal Donuts. I want this to look messy and vandalized or spray painted kind of look to it and so, so I wanted the, I really wanted happened to be rounded and then maybe put something underneath of it I was thinking maybe some journaling some lined journaling underneath of it uh, but I ended up going against that idea and for some reason at the beginning I'm thinking I want this happened to be my title and I want it uh, in that top right hand corner but I'm going to change my mind on that and so I'm 
I'm picking out the letters for this from my stash. These are foam letter stickers. And these ones are called uh, Afterglow. They're from Amy Tangerine as well. And then the thicker set that the the word happened and then the heart came from is called Twins. And those are both older Amy Tangerine sets. And I, I didn't have a T. So what I'm going to do to make a T is, first of all, I'm going to make use of the fact that there is an outline of where the T used to be on that set of thickers. So I can make my homemade T be the exact right proportions of the T that came with this letter sticker set. And that just helps the tea look right <laughs> um, as opposed to me having to guess I might have made the top on the tea a little bit too long or a little bit too short and so this tea is exactly the same proportions as the tea that came in the set even though it's my own homemade tea and I just as you see I just used a one and then some other letter to uh, oh the equal sign to make that I really like the H with the with the legs be close together and then the arms of the H spread out like that, it almost looks like it's saying hooray. And so, <laughs> so I wanted to put that like that. And here I'm deciding to put the title down here instead of up top. And I, I really like how that looks. And at first I was thinking about layering the words for this on top of the on top of the photo it does have a nice casual look but as you'll see I'm going to scooch things around to the point that it's not going to be like that at all and um, yeah so what I found I put the I put the happen the word happens down and then I decided to start putting the letters for this and as I put them down it became clear to me that I wasn't really getting the readability that I wanted um, or the impact that I wanted the word this to have because it was overlapping too much with the photo that has a dark background on it where it was overlapping and I really wanted this title to stand against a lighter background to really have a bit more impact especially where I love how casual this font is and I, I just love the combination of this block blo like tall thin blocky font with the script font of happened. So you saw me pull it down and now I'm going to reposition the photos just to help it look more like the title is nestled. And as I do that, you can see that orphan corner of the yellow paper popping out in the top there. It's going to pop out even more as I shift things around a little bit. And I'm thinking that this emoji, this is from Freckled Fawn in my stash. I think that that looks cute right there in that little space. I wanted something really bright in that space and that, that does the trick. And I'm just looking at some of the other embellishments and trying to decide what I might want to use on this page. I'd like, I, I'm kind of thinking about that big gray space above the photo, above the second photo. And then I remembered I wanted to cut out some of these frames. So I'm choosing four of the frames. I'm going with this idea of quadrants. And although I often want odd numbers, I'm gonna cut five of these. Um, although I want, odd numbers, which is why I cut five. Um, I'm also very aware of the fact that I'm going with a quadrant theme here and wanting to emphasize the idea of fours or uh, fours and also quarters. So I'm mindful of that. I'm going to cut these out, just fussy cutting them really easy when the edges are straight like this and a little bit less. So when they're curvy, I'm using my Cutter B scissors, which are from EK Success. And a small pair of scissors like this is helpful. It's not necessary for doing fussy cutting, but it definitely makes fussy cutting a little bit easier, as is the idea of uh, keeping your scissor hand stiff and straight and moving the paper instead of moving your scissors around the paper. Just move your paper around. You'll see that I move my scissors a little bit, but not too much especially when I'm doing this kind of in and out, I'll move the scissors and the paper a little bit. And I really love the doodly look of these picture frames, but I also really like how it picks up on the green from that Oscar donut that's on the top. This is such a cute donut. All the donuts had cool names. Oscar was that one. And then the pink one underneath of it is called Homer Simpson. And I really like how it's kind of like the quintessential um, frosted donut from the Simpsons with the sprinkles on it. 
and uh, I don't remember the name of the M&M one, but I do remember that the other one was had a boring name. It was just kind of like chocolate and caramel drizzle or something like that. Um, oh, it didn't have like a creative name. So I'm thinking I might want to spread these around the page. So this is my first idea of how I might want to do that. So they're in four places, even though there are five of them, because two of them are overlapping with each other. And I also want an arrow. So I want an arrow to go from the first photo with the intact donuts to the photo of the what we call Franken donut, which is one donut made out of the four quarters of the four. Of the four. Uh, and yeah, so I have my arrow case pulled out and look at this basic gray arrow. This is from the Lime Ricky collection, which was my very first collection, like designer paper that I bought that I paid like more money than I thought I should. <laughs> if only I had known how much money I would end up spending on scrapbooking stuff. This is when I was really new to scrapbooking. So I cut it down because it was obviously too big and, and twirly, but I decided to use the second part that I cut off just as a bit of an accent so that that orangey color isn't only in one place. Like I just wanted it to repeat someplace else and give a little bit of balance to the page. So just tucking it in here helps with that. Then I realized that I hadn't actually taped everything down yet. So I just took my ATG and taped the uh, overall chunk of layers and photo and stuff all down to the back. And that makes it easier for me to proceed. And now I can't remember where I had put my frames. So I'm kind of struggling here with, wait a minute, where were these <laughs> again? And I can't remember, so I'm just gonna do it like this for now. And then I thought, I think I, I think I want this heart to be on one of the frames because it helps the heart to stand out and not get lost amongst the photo. And uh, also, I just like the design of that. So I'm gonna put Vandal Donuts inside, and then I'm just gonna kind of go heavy-handed with my kind of over going over the letters over and over again in a heavy kind of a way so that it looks a little bit like maybe it was scrawled there like a form of graffiti or something kind of like it was written on a bathroom wall or something like that and then I really love this washi tape sticker from Freckled Fun because it looks like sprinkles from a donut so I'm going to put it in at first I'm going to put it in three different places on this page so you see it there there and there and then I decided I actually put the date there and I didn't like how it looked so I thought that this sprinkle washi tape would just cover up the date for me so that I, I like that a little bit better and now it's in four different places. And I am gonna dress up this arrow by adding this yum from the wood veneer stickers from the Hip Kit Club. That's from an older kit club, from, uh, from an older kit maybe from the summer of 2017, I'm guessing. And I like how that just adds more detail to that arrow. It makes it a little bit less boring looking. And I'm so I've got that wood veneer um, flower over there by the word yum. And I'm looking for something blue to put on this other frame here. So each frame is going to get something. One has a yellow flower. One has a black heart on it. One has that pink flower. And now I'm thinking, what on earth can go on this one? And at first... I, I don't I, I like the color of those clouds but I don't really like the clouds so I'm going to choose this other thing that is a similar color but it has words on it that I don't want so I'm going to cover up the words with washi tape which doesn't exactly cover them up but it does it does a good enough job and then the that uh that little wood veneer flower and then I do want more black on this page so I decided to use that arrow there and I'll put this arrow here and then I have a third arrow those are all from the freckled fawn washi and put it up there pointing to the other one so that gives me a little pop of black every here and there and then I wanted wood veneer on each of these corners as well or on each of these clusters. And I'm just going back and adding adhesive because I realized that many of these I just placed and didn't actually adhere. And so I'm just going back and doing that. So I'm using repetition here where there's the, the washi tape is repeated, the frames are repeated, the wood veneer is repeated, the black accent is repeated, usually in a washi tape arrow, but also in the heart that where it says Vandal Donuts. 
And I'm just trying to get a little bit of each color in there in terms of pink, yellow, and blue on each of those um, clusters. And I'm not 100% successful in that, but I'm just being mindful of it as I go. I see, look, that the adhesive on those rubber pieces from Freckled Fawn, they leave like a, a greasy residue. So I'm taking off the adhesive just by rubbing it on my fingers. It comes off pretty easily. Then I'm going to use glue dots instead of the adhesive that those came with because I don't like it. And they're not very sticky either. And I'm just placing it back in the same place so that's covering up the grease stain that was left behind. I added a wood veneer to that heart around Vandal Donuts just for a, a little bit of interest. And I had this puffy heart donut from Dear Lizzie that I just thought, I gotta get this on the page. So I just put it there. It looks cute. It's a little random, but that's okay. This is a pretty random page. All of the clusters are pretty, you know, out there, I guess. Now I need some journaling. So I really liked the, the fact that this was blue. And I also really liked the asterisk. So I was gonna, thinking, am I going to punch it? Am I going to cut it into a rectangle? And then I decided to use this scalloped oval. This is a really old supply of mine. It's from my early days when I first got a cuddle bug. This is my cuddle kid, which is a very small desk, like workspace. Um, it's a children's die cut machine and I really like it because it doesn't take up much space on my workspace and it's easy to use in a video so that's what I'm using here. Anything that fits through it I usually it's my preferred die cutting machine. And so it looks a little boring to me, especially compared to everything so colorful on the page. So I thought I would outline it. And at first I didn't want it to have a whole lot of impact. So I, at first I outlined it with my gray Chamel pen. Meh. Look at that. It just kind of disappears. It, it's like it immediately, as soon as you put it on there, it recedes. And so I'm going to try outlining it with my black Sharpie pen and see if that will give it a little bit more impact. And it will give it a little bit more impact, but not, still not enough. So still, it has a bit more presence, but it's still receding compared to everything else. Like it, it's kind of like pushing itself back and everything else pops up around it visually. So I'm thinking, what am I gonna do here? I wish it was more the color of that where I'm pointing right now. So I thought maybe I could just put this behind it and it pulls it forward a little bit. See, it kind of pushes it forward because there's something interesting behind it. But then I thought maybe I can make it a different color. So I'm going to use my non-stick craft mat here. And I grabbed this distress ink. The color is Broken China. It's my one of my very first distress inks from when I first started scrapbooking. So I'm going way back in my supplies here and using lots of old things. I'm starting with one coat and I'm using my blending tool. I don't have the round ones. I have some of the round ones, but... This one I already had used with that color, so I'm just using that. Another coat just brings it up to the color that I wanted it to be. You see it's a very similar color to the cloud, and also you'll see in a second that it's pretty similar to that other uh, circular thing over to the left. So it's I, I like it now. It has a bit more presence, and it fits better with the things that are already on the page. And I just want to scooch it so that it's underlapping with the arrow and also with that pink flower above it and sticking under the photo as well. So my journaling is going to say, um, I'll read it to you. It says, Scott buys four and cuts them into quarters, so we all get a taste of everything. And this is something that Scott does with almost everything that he buys and so uh so and we'll know that when we when we read this page I really like it I really like that I was able to document this this is the kind of thing that I wouldn't normally think about scrapbooking it's not like a really important family story but it's just one little quirky thing about us that I I like having in my scrapbook I'm going to add the date with a is this narwhal what it's one of the gray um Lawn Fawn inks. I think it might be Narwhal. I have two of them, two different grays. Uh, yeah, so now I'm thinking I need some splatter and here's where this goes two different ways. So I want splatter and I want it to be in all four quadrants because I'm, you know, doing the whole quadrant thing. I am, this is how I get a really fine mist of splatter is I uh, use packaging and then I just flick it and that gives me a really fine mist and I like how it looks but I also wanted some larger splatters one accidentally dripped onto my my um, palette that I use as a 
as a thing to keep my work surface from getting dirty. And then I decided to purposely put some big splatters on. So, so the nozzle does a pretty good job of the big splatters. So I'm using a combination here of the flicking from packaging technique and also splattering larger splatters with the nozzle. There you go. There we go. And last quarter or quadrant, get that nice fine mist on there first and then I'll put a big blob right there. There we go. So there's fine mist and blobs in each of the quarters and this would have been fine as it is now. I don't want to throw away that beautiful gold mist so I'm just going to smush it onto a plain piece of white cardstock. I can use that for anything. I could use it as the beginning of a background but I could also die cut some stuff or punch some things out of it or I don't know what I'll do with it but I just didn't want to waste that beautiful gold mist and I didn't have an art journal handy to smush it onto. Now I want to dry these before I go ahead and take some pictures. When you see the pictures, one thing that you'll notice is that I added some black mist. I felt like it didn't look vandalized enough, like where I was kind of going with that idea of the vandal donut shop. And so as you can see, I actually really like this. I, I kind of wish I hadn't added the black mist. I really like how this looks. But in the photos at the end, you'll see it with black mist added and it looks fine too. It definitely looks a lot messier with the black mist and it didn't land in exactly the places I wanted it to. I didn't use the packaging technique. I just used the nozzle and it didn't. Yeah. So anyhow, this is quite nice. I wish I had left it like this, but it looks okay the way it, it is too. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. The photos are coming up very, very shortly. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for your patience with my channel. I know that I haven't had a good schedule of uploading lately and I do intend for it to become more regular. I'm just kind of working out some kinks in my schedule and figuring out how I'm gonna be able to do everything that I need to do, including scrapbooking, because it's important that I make time for my hobby because it is is something that makes me feel really good and happy and well so uh, thank you so much for watching this one as you can see there's those black splatters definitely adds to the messy look and the idea of kind of the vandal theme um, yeah so I, I like it I like it uh, anyhow thanks so much for watching I hope you have a really great scrappy week